some time ago, I did a, a video wondering what the Fallout TV show would look like. As I know, it, I, I don't really want to be running a gaming channel here. It's It requires an immense amount of effort and time to do it. You have to hook up um, all sorts of staff, live stream gaming games as you play them. It's more trouble than it's worth, and there's a million people better equipped to do it who are already doing it than I am. However, uh, having actually watched all eight episodes of the show, um, I let's have my thoughts on it, which will be coming out in a free flow manner in a minute. One, I was pleasantly surprised. It was far better than I thought. I've seen an awful lot of adaptations of computer game material over the years, and mostly they're well, the word rubbish would be would be nice for some of them. Um, I'll give it a a reasonably good grade if I was to grade it. I hate grading things, and I hate when people try and do it because I, I don't really think you could approach it looking looking at material like that. You either like it or dislike it. It keeps the ethos of the games. It's remarkably satirical. I felt that developed more and more as the episodes went on and it became very pointed towards the end. I'm trying to avoid spoilers, but let's just say it becomes incredibly satirical of uh, as it goes on and the digs of consumerism that are there and underlie the Fallout universe become ever more pointed and sharp as it goes on and particularly sharp on the final two episodes. Do I feel it has a few rough edges? Um, possibly. Lucy suddenly evolves a few skills that are a, a bit Mary Sue-like, Sue but she, ne she never sort of um, rises to be something like Rey in the Star Wars franchise where she can do everything or, uh, or anything so silly. She's still on a learning curve throughout the series, and she's still actually remarkably well written in that respect. She starts off as a somewhat naive young woman and still preserves some of that naivety right up until the final episode, which, um, pun intended, there's literally a, a bomb drop in, in, at the end of that, where she loses a certain amount of that naivety. Um, what does it fit into the game's universe? Well, that's caused some controversy. I'll put myself out there by saying I don't really care. The, uh, it's a fictional universe and the games tend to contradict themselves anyway and they're full of unreliable narrators anyway who are all over the place in how they relate events so it's very hard to make an absolutely consistent continuity anyway when the game first game came out in 1997 it was being written as a kind of retro 1950s style of sci-fi that viewed how the US would evolve if there had never been things like transistors or modern computer technology um, with elements of sort of McCarthy-esque politics glued onto it. Um, that's been kept but toned down as the series has gone on. And it's especially since it turned out into 3D in 2008 or so when Bethesda got hold of it. So um, it's very hard to say that the, the game has any absolute continuity that you could glue together in a meaningful way. Just like Star Trek, it has a very kind of rough continuity that you can use as a kind of rough overarching way to view it. I'm not a fan of having to glue great co giant continuity together. So long as you have some rough overall continuity with these kind of franchises, it's inevitable they're going to be handled by a million pair of hands if they persist and going to be taken over by a million people and a million visions are going to sort of impact on them it's in it, a couple of thoughts one the they're obviously going for the feel of a classic western here with spaghetti western overtones flying all over the place particularly with one character if you watch it you'll see exactly what i mean um it is very gory if you watch it and you have a um a, a weak stomach be prepared for some extreme gore now um, that didn't really bother to me too much, but I have a fairly strong stomach and I'm used to that sort of stuff. I can imagine some people might not find some of the imagery of um, sort of bits of guts flying about and foots being stepped on and extreme violence of like that, all that thrilling. 
I would not advise putting it on if you've got anyone like that in the household around. It's certainly not an under 18 thing. That's for sure. Um, it does deal with a number of ethically charged situations and raise some obvious ethical questions about how you deal with them. It doesn't provide any easy answers, which is great because I hate shows that do provide easy answers. It's set in a post-apocalyptic world and there would be no easy answers to some of the questions it raises. Um, it does provide a possible answer in the last two episodes to as to why Fallout after 200 years, why it still has never evolved a, a particularly settled universe and why we still have small communities where we have rusting cars sitting about, which people who play the games a lot are always complaining about, you'll notice, and going, look, surely after 200 years, people might have evolved some level of society again. And why are all these rusting cars sitting about anyway? And what's all this food doing sitting in supermarkets after 200 years? Usually, if you play the games, you just take it as part of the a conceit of the games that, you know, it's parodying the, the endless shelf lives of processed food and how unhealthy it is for us all and, and how we all eat this rubbish in the Western world. But it does become a bit silly at, at points. I'd say so far, it's actually a pleasant surprise. Um, and it shows that you can adapt game material if you use a a level of discretion and to do so. Um, let's put it this way. Um, if we were to compare it against a certain other franchise um, uh, with the word rings and poor in there, which cost uh, reportedly $1 billion to produce, um, I'd have to say the writing was far, far superior here. Is it perfect? No, but you're adapting a computer game. And it, any rough edges it has, I something it could be sanded down as time goes. Is it worth a watch? Yes, yeah, certainly. Has it got some odd coincidences and weird sort of times? Yeah, that's part of the way the game works anyway. The game's plots always work like that anyway. And have weird, strange coincidences and weird interlocking plots. It's again a conceit of the game. I'm sure it's going to be renewed and, and people will be sitting there after episode eight wondering well, what's going to happen to all these characters and what's the hidden mystery behind some of them. Let's wait and see.